All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over cardiac output. Yes, unfortunately, we have arrived to the math portion of physiology. I hate math. You probably hate math. We all hate math. But it's not going to be that bad. I promise. It's just a very simple multiplication or division problem. Cardiac output is defined as the amount of blood pumped out of the heart in a given time frame. This is usually measured in liters per minute. So the units for cardiac output is liters per minute. Heart rate is something you probably already know, hopefully. It's the how many times your heart beats in a minute. Stroke volume is probably something that's new. Stroke volume, abbreviated as SV, is the volume of blood pumped out with each heartbeat, measured in milliliters. How do we actually calculate cardiac output? Well, we use this huge equation down here. It goes as follows. Cardiac output equals the heart rate times stroke volume. That's it. There is a harder version of this equation. Basically, stroke volume can actually be broken down to different components, but we're not going to worry about that in this video. In the next video, I want to break down the stroke volume and incorporate the harder concepts. But in this video, we're just going to go over the cardiac output, heart rate, and stroke volume as a whole. Usually on physiology exams, you are given a question like this. A patient has a resting heart rate of 70 beats per minute and a stroke volume of 80 milliliters. Calculate the cardiac output in liters per minute. Okay, so let's first write down what terms we actually have. What were, what were we given? So let me, let's do this. Um, okay, so we are trying to find cardiac output. So we don't know this. We have heart rate, which is 70 beats per minute. 70 BPM. Stroke volume is 80 milliliters. So SV equals 80 milliliters. So we use this equation. And let's do the math. So this is 70 times 80, which equals 5,600 milliliters per minute. The reason it's milliliters per minute is because we are given stroke volume in milliliters and then the heart rate is measured in minutes. Now, here's the question. Is this our answer? If you said yes, you would be mistaken. This is not our answer. Why? Professors love to trick you like this. The reason it's not the answer is because the question states Calculate cardiac output in liters per minute, not milliliters per minute. So you have to be careful. Especially if this is like a free response question, slow down and make sure you read the question and understand the units that you are given. There are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. So we divide by 1,000. Let's do that. So 5,600 milliliters per minute divided by 1,000. So we just cancel the zeros. So this is assuming you don't have a calculator because you're usually not given calculators in physiology exams. So now we have an extra zero that we need to get rid of, so this becomes a decimal point. This now is equal to 
5.6 liters per minute. And this is our answer. So when you answer these type of questions, make sure you're aware of the units. Let's do another one. A patient has a cardiac output of 4 liters per minute and a stroke volume of 80 milliliters. What's the heart rate in beats per minute? So let's write down what we have. So you have cardiac output is equal to 4 liters per minute. Stroke volume is 80 milliliters. What's the heart rate? So we don't know heart rate. Okay. So this was our original equation we were given. Uh, Let's rearrange it so we can solve for heart rate. This becomes heart rate equals cardiac output divided by stroke volume. So what do we put? What well, we put four on the top, four liters, that's cardiac output. You probably wrote down this. This is incorrect. What do you mean why? You said 80 milliliters of stroke volume and we put 80 milliliters for stroke volume on the below. That is true, but we need to make sure the units match. We are dividing four liters, not four milliliters. So we need to convert this into liters. 80 milliliters is 0 0.080 liters. So you have to be careful with the units. Now, if you were doing this without a calculator, notice that half of eight, so we have an eight here, is four. So we already know there's gonna be a five in there. Now, the answer is not five beats per minute. Think about it like this. You have to use a little bit of reason. Just pretend you don't have a calculator on the exam. You have to use a little bit of reason. A patient would not be alive with a heart rate of five beats per minute. So there's at least a zero here. A patient, if you add another zero, we get 500 beats per minute. A patient would not be alive with 500 beats per minute either. So the answer must be 50 beats per minute. Why am I bringing this up? This is very helpful for the MCAT. If you're out there going to take the MCAT, you probably know or don't know that you actually are not allowed a calculator on the exam. No calculators are allowed on the MCAT. So you have to use reasoning to figure out the answer. So that is why I purposely chose these numbers as 80 and 4. 0 0.080 and 4. Because 4 is half of 8. So you know it's going to be 50, like 0.5 or something like that. That's the reason I did it. And the AMCAT likes to do that. They're going to give you nice numbers. They're not going to give you something like, well, they could, but it could be like 4.2 divided by... I don't know, 0 0.964 or something like that, right? I don't even know how to do that in my head. So they're going to give me nice numbers, mostly, and that's the kind of reasoning you're going to use. It's a very helpful MCAT trick. That's how you calculate heart rate. And that is it for cardiac output. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Until next time, later.